right, here's the 411, folks. Just give him one of these. Welcome to episode 26 of the 411, folks. I am your host, Scott, and I am here with the fabulous Jake. Hey. We are back, and we are ready to talk games. Jake, how are you going? Good. How are you? Day off today. Ah, so For good. Both of us. Public holiday, Friday, long weekend. It um, It's a bit sad how quick the day goes when I'm not at work. I know. Yeah, but I feel like when it's just a normal weekend... I feel like I'm always trying to do lots of things to try and, you know, do things on my weekend so I don't waste it. Mm. Today, I've just been lazing around doing nothing because I don't care because I've still got a whole weekend ahead of me, you know? Sure. It's like a it's like a write-off day where I can just relax. Yeah. Uh, I'm planning Sunday to be my nothing day mm. because today I did lots of things, including this, and Saturday also a very busy day, so Sunday will be nothing. Game day. Yes. And one of those games, in fact, will be what I'm going to talk about later. It's a very good game. Excellent. I want to start off this podcast with a question. Mm -hmm. Something unrelated to games. Jack. Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? Yes. Me too. Did you hear that um, they discovered this sort of star that's similar to Earth? (sighs) Um, I think I overheard people talking about this at work, mm. but, um, I don't know. Go on. I read it. Um, I tried to read the full article, but it came up as one of those things you have to pay for. Mm. So I sort of just read an article that someone wrote about the article. So it wasn't very in depth and I can't really remember a lot of the things, but what I do rem- remember is that they call it a star. They don't call it, a, call it a planet. They're calling it a star that's, um, has its own sun, I guess, but the sun is only, I think, not even half as powerful as our sun. So the the star that they discovered was um, a lot dimmer than our planet and a lot colder, I guess, but it still sort of has some of our same traits for um, life, as in, you know, water and plants and everything. Well, I was about to ask, doesn't it, for it to be considered a planet, doesn't it need proper ecosystems like water i don't know life what, yeah stuff. i don't know how they choose what a planet is or anything hmm. but they're sort of calling it a star because they don't know i don't think they know much about it yet but yeah i think um it oh, what, what was it the the rotation around this because when our earth rotates around the sun that's 365 days i think when their that star rotates around the sun it's like 18 days or something. Mm. That's what I heard. How far away is this? I don't know. That's another thing I I forgot. I don't know if it was said in the article as well. I don't know if it's... I think it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. But they're just much smaller. That's why it wasn't discovered until now. Okay. So they're quite small. But yeah, it's fairly close. Which And it takes... um, I forget the numbers. But um, the thing that they're developing now is this sort of light speed travel kind of thing. And, um, but it won't be like for people, obviously not in our lifetime anyway, but it could be like for a little, um, what's it called? A little robot. Drone. Yeah. A little robot drone thing. Um, they developing this thing where they could shoot it out and it would, could land there within 20 years. Ugh. So uh, still in our, it's so annoying when you read stuff like this, because you know, in our lifetime, we're never going to be able to see anything. Well, I don't know if they were to shoot that robot thing out today and like you said it could take approximately 20 years mm. but the thing that, the thing that they're developing isn't invented yet you know that oh exactly still, yeah but hypothetically today if they shot that thing out yeah and if they imagine how much progress we can make in that 20 years we could in that 20 years we could yeah. even send something out that would beat that thing yeah yeah out there yeah, true true um i don't know like you said like you said i'm not sure if any of this stuff they find or see like you said in our lifetime mm. But uh, I'm I'm optimistic that we'll I don't know I want I want space travel to be a a a normal human thing by the time I die. 
I believe that in our lifetime, um, there won't be such thing as like, you know, full, full on space travelers and people are going from planet to planet, mm. you know, doing all this, um, you know, uh, like freelancer kind of thing. But there will be, I think people, it'll be like a tourist attraction where you can go into space just orbiting outside of Earth yeah, to see like a view of Earth. And it would cost a lot of money, but that that happens now. But it's it's a, a ridiculous number of money. but I, but I think it'd be as common as people having weddings out there and stuff like that, you uh-huh. know. Yeah, and um, people it could be as um hundred years from now it could be as common as people just going to Dreamworld for the day. They could go to space for the day, you know. Have people been married in space yet? I don't think so. We would have heard about that, wouldn't we? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Also, um. This is kind of a similar topic on another podcast I listened to, but people are wondering if um, people have had sex in space yet. Don't know if that's ever happened. Well, I think it would be illegal because they if it, if it, if that has happened, they'd be astronauts on on a mission or on a job, and if they have, then wouldn't that be sort of against the law or something? What if their mission is to do it? Do it and come back. See what happens. Why would that be any different? Just to see what happens. I don't know. What would be interesting if someone was born in space? Oh yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. They um their passport could be an Earth passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Um, but I don't like the argument when people say, um, that there is no alien life because if there was, they would have been here by now. They would have visited us. Yeah. Because, uh, because my argument with that is, why do we always assume that they're more advanced than us? They could be Stone Age right now, that's a and very we're good, more advanced than them, you know? It's a good question, yeah. Uh, everyone's perception of alien life is what everyone sees in, popular, in pop culture. Yeah, exactly. You know, advanced beings that yeah. have laser guns and, and sentinel sentinel technology or whatever but yeah i've never thought about thought about it like that all all those movies that we see of those advanced alien life visiting us i think it's going to be one day us visiting them and where those advanced alien species yeah has anyone has there been a movie ever like that i don't know but well something something to look into (laughs) well you could say planet of the apes is that kind of movie people oh wait no the apes took over this yeah, planet, no, didn't they? Yeah, no, it's still on Earth. Whoops. <laughs> Come on, Jake. <laughs> no, but, um... Yeah, that's a bit of a scary thought. Do you mm. think... I, I definitely think that, um... Technology will be the death of us all, though. Like... When it goes just too far. Yeah, like... Do you think it'll I, be, like, an iRobot thing? No, not iRobot. Um, Terminator. I definitely think mm. Terminator is the future. Skynet? mm, mm. People, people have seen what can potentially happen in these dumb movies, mm. and people are aiming their goals towards that. Yeah, and um, just it must have been last week I watched this um video on, on Facebook that an American news website posted, yeah. and it's these obviously people are putting a lot of work into robotics more now than ever, and it's this robot with a human face on it. Yeah, that can talk to you and react to you, and it's pretty much designed to be like. A companion to a human mm, mm. for the, for hu- lonely humans, it's freaky. I know. I've seen shit like that, like Japanese videos or something of those robots. It's fucking freaky. Yeah, it's like worse than a horror movie. Mm. Like, I wouldn't mind if it was just it looked like a robot, but when they give it human features, that's when it's freaky. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. So, um, Skynet, it's happening. It, you know, I was gonna say before you said Terminator, I was gonna say like a Dragon Ball Z with the androids thing. Oh yeah. But that story is pretty much Terminator. You know, the kid from the future, which is Trunks, comes back and warns them. Yeah. That is Terminator. So Terminator stole it from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z was first. Hmm. Wait, was it? No, Terminator was 1984. 84, really? Yeah. I was thinking 89. No, Dragon Ball Z would have been after. Oh. Yeah. (laughs) Well. But you know the story of Goku coming to Earth as a baby in the the little pod? Mm. That's Superman. That's the story of Superman. Yeah, you're right. Is that like a blatant? Well, like I mean, did 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 what, what's his name? Akira Toriyama? Did he take reference to it or inspiration from it? 
a lot of the things I've read, they've, he took inf- inspiration from like a monkey boy or something, but like nothing to do with Sp- Superman. But it's clearly like a Superman, like exactly what happens. Yeah. I've never thought about it until you said it, yeah. but... Um, have you seen Stranger Things yet? No, I haven't. Oh. I've been... I've been... There's a lot of things I've been having to get watch, get through. And unfortunately, that's just on my, on the, on my list. Because um, the, the season two hasn't even been announced yet, right? There has been an interview with the creators of the show, Matt Duffer. And Ross Duffer. It's the Duffer Brothers, which I've never heard of before. This is the first thing they've done, do you know? Pretty sure, because no one's ever heard of them. Okay. But, um, yeah, they were they were actually speaking about what season two might be like, and even though it hasn't even been announced, but I guess that is an announcement in itself. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> they actually said that they expect people to like the first season better, just because... And they kept mention they mentioned this like four or five times that the season two will be darker and weirder. Mm. Um, but they said that also they do have an intended ending for the show, and they try to sort of take hints from Breaking Bad, as Breaking Bad had a beginning, and they from the start you knew um, kind of where it was heading, but they had a lot of things in the middle. Mm. So that's sort of what Stranger Stranger Things has has got going for it. They, they, it's got an intended ending for it. Unlike Lost, where they just made it up every week. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. Yeah, they they had no idea where they were going. <laughs> um, but they also said that they di- they didn't see this show as being one of those shows where it would last six or seven seasons or five or six. Seasons. I I I think the maximum this would have it would probably have like four seasons. Yeah, three or four seasons. I reckon that sounds good to me. Yeah, and I think it only had eight episodes as well. Okay. I think the least, the less episodes, the the better. I think. Yeah. For this kind of show. No, I'll definitely get there. Um, I just have to resubscribe to Netflix. So, I, I'm both need to watch Netflix for Stranger Things. The, have you heard that show, The Get Down? Yeah. Need to watch that. Apparently, that's really good. And um, the new season of BoJack Horseman. Need to get onto that. So. Is that season three now? Yeah. I don't think. I think. I don't think they're a year apart. I yeah. Think. Yeah. That seems way seems, too quick. It feels like. Maybe eight months or so. The guy that voices Bojack Horseman, what's his name? Um, he's from Arrested Development. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is in so many shows. Yeah, but like they all get they all get like cancelled within a year. Like if oh. you look up on IMDb, yeah, he Will, was, Will Arnett is. His yeah, name. he was on that sitcom um, where yeah. he loses with his parents. Yeah, yeah. Which actually wasn't too bad. He's been in so many. Like look up look up IMDb. The past five years, he's been in like ten shows that have been canned. Oh. But the shows have well, from what I can remember, the shows haven't been that bad. Yeah, well, I think just they're they're all just average. Yeah, I don't understand. Well, whatever that sitcom was called, where mm. he moves back in with his parents, I remember watching that on a. Uh, I maybe watched three or four episodes on a plane mm. ride. It was actually really good for a modern day sitcom. Yeah, unlike, oh my god, if I have to watch another episode of Big Bang Theory. <laughs> That is not a good sitcom. I was actually watching some late night TV last night. A few sitcoms were on. Um, the worst, one of the worst sitcoms I've ever seen. Is, Two broke girls. Oh, that's that's bad. <laughs> but it, I forgot what it's called. But it's with um, it's it's got Betty White, it's got Daphne from Frasier. Oh yeah, this is on TV all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. What you're it's about. got one of the chicks from Just Shoot Me. Mm-hmm. Um, my God, that is bad. It's just it's it's actually a show for the the age of the women in the show is the target demographic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just terrible. There's nothing. Oh, it's crap. Um, but also after that was a double episode of that that seventy show. Oh yeah. My God, that has aged badly. Oh really? Uh, maybe it's better just when I because we used we used to watch the DVDs all the time, but yeah. this was just on TV. Looks really bad. What season? It was, season, it was season two. Yeah. But that was still 2000 and two, 2007. No way. It finished around 2007. Oh, yeah. So it finished in 2006. I actually. think the first no, season was 1999. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's aged pretty bad. It's still one of my favorite sitcoms. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Like when I was, I, I just put it on for a bit and I was laughing straight away. Mm. It's so good. One of the best. I just needed it to come out on Blu ray. Yeah. It's one of those ones like 
last week we were talking off air about um, Battlestar Galactica, mm. still not on Blu-ray. Why? It, it is, but you have to get it on eBay. Yeah, but why? I don't know. They did sell it in, at JB, but um, they just stopped selling it for some reason. Stupid. Strange. But, um, yeah, so that 70s show, Seinfeld, top two. Top two? And Friends got to be in there somewhere. Yeah. I think it, I can't, definitely that 70s show, um, The Office for me. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But, so, I mean, if we're talking sitcoms with laughing, you know, actual studio, it's filmed in a studio. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, for me, this is a bit of a one choice, but I really like Home Improvement. Uh, Why? Oh, I don't know. It's good. What about Becca? <laughs> what about Becca? Fucking Becca. <laughs> um, I suppose we should move on and talk some games. Perhaps. Do you want to start off with your segment that we missed last week? Yeah. Oh, okay. Water well, cooler conversations. <laughs> yeah, so... Like usual, uh, I mention all the time that I, I now work in an office. Mm. When you work in an office, you have dumb people you work around. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some of the people I work around are pretty into games, which is pretty cool to talk about, but they're, une- they're uneducated gamers. So they play games, but they don't, they're not tacked on to what's really going on. So I, I really should have thought about what happened this week, but one of the biggest <laughs> ones, one of the biggest ones was... Um, this happened actually a couple of weeks ago before the release of No Man's Sky. Um, and then we're all chatting about No Man's Sky and then they're all like... One guy was like, oh, yeah, I was really interested in No Man's Sky, but but um, I saw it's not coming out for Xbox. And one other person was like, oh, really? I'm sure it is. No, it definitely is. What? I don't understand why it wouldn't be coming out for Xbox. And then I bought in and I said, yeah, it's, it's just a PS4 PC exclusive kind of thing. And they're like... Really, you sure? Like, why Why would they do that? Why would they make games exclusive? I said, I don't know, because really, I don't know. What, was he saying, why do they make games exclusive? Like, he didn't. He never thought games were exclusive? Yeah. Yeah, he just he just assumed all games were over all consoles. Oh my That's God. what it sounded like. So, like usual, I kind of, I kind of didn't want to, I didn't want to burn the fires. Yeah. I wanted to stay out of it. It was just, it was just, I don't, I don't, I, I thought it was, even for non, true, even for non-hardcore gamers, these are just casual gamers we're talking about, mm. I thought exclusive games was not a strange, not a foreign concept. Yeah, yeah. So it was just, it was just strange, he's like, yeah, yeah, well, I'm going to get it for Xbox, I'm like, nope, good luck with that. You have to buy a PS4. Yeah. Water cooler conversations. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> there are other things that happen during the week, but this is that's the worst one I can think of. Anyway, um, more and more, I've been really wanting to get a PS4 just because of the games that have been coming out. Yeah, No Man's Sky. I really want to play it. I really want to play Uncharted Four. Mm. It's just going to keep getting worse, isn't it? Yeah, especially with that new Spider-Man game coming. Ah. <sighs> Hopefully, NX solves all my issues, so I don't even think about PS4 games. You know, I was thinking about the other day, and then when you posted uh, our latest episode a couple of days ago, mm. the title was called like "Another NX Discussion" or something. Yeah. Then I was thinking, it, the the word NX has been thrown around for so long now. It's just NX, NX, NX. Mm. It would be strange to. That's not. That's definitely not its official title. It's. It would be strange to think what it's actually going to be called now. Everyone's so used to saying NX. I know that was the same with um when we didn't know what Zelda was going to be called. Everybody called it you know Zelda Wii U or yeah. Zelda NX, and now we can call it Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but same, yeah, it's same goes with what the PS VR PlayStation VR it was called Project Project. Oh, wow, I can't even remember. Well, there you go. PS4 was codenamed PlayStation Orbis. Yeah, but that that definitely wasn't thrown around as much no. as the NX. NX, yeah, is the most... Oh, I can't wait till we can actually call it something. Mm. Do you want to make some predictions about what it's going to be called? Gosh. Um, what about... Um, 
I so, like... Something to do with... Sim- I, I, I hope they bring the word super back. Yeah. That'd be cool. Super Wii. No. Drop the Wii altogether. <laughs> I would like if the original name for the Wii was Nintendo Revolution. Wow, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'd actually like that. That's cool. Nintendo Revolution. I hope the word Nintendo is in the title. Mm-hmm. Nintendo, it was called Nintendo Wii and it was called Nintendo Wii U, but nobody said Nintendo, you know. Bring back the word Nintendo like it was used as in Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64. Yeah. You know, you've got to say the Nintendo to actually say the name. Yeah. It, you know? Well, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's in all the... Yeah, you're right. It is Nintendo GameCube, but no one says Nintendo GameCube. Yeah. You know? So the, I think they need to make a name where people do say the name Nintendo to bring that back. Mm. I, I think you're right. Super something sounds really cool. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if... Can they even just say Super Nintendo 2.0 or something? I don't or? know, hey. I really wish... Like, or, or sort of hoped that they did follow sort of the uh, PlayStation trend kind of thing. Like, just calling it Super Nintendo 1, Super Nintendo mm. 2, Super Nintendo 3. No, because, you know, with Nintendo, each console generation is so vastly different. different yeah. Whereas PlayStation is just adding on top of yeah, already a, yeah. a, a really solid platform. Like, PS to 3 to 4 mm. is a huge difference, but it's essentially the same kind what, of Whatever thing. it is, anyway, they're, they're not, they're, it's going to be so fucking weird. It's not going to do anything to do with Super or anything, because... They're going on about how this is just something completely new and different that we've never had before. So mm. the name is going to be the same. It's going to be some some crazy, weird name. I mean, fucking we, seriously, we. Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> it's right. It's just going to be something crazy like that. That's what, what it's going to be. I mean, and they're not going to hold back because we was the most popular console they've ever had, and that's the most ridiculous name you've yeah. ever heard. So it's going to be something like that. Yeah, I've got no opinion on what it could, what it could be named because you're right, it it'd be just as dumb as Nintendo Wii. Not dumb. It's a cool name, but it's how can they market that? Yeah, it's hard to get used to. They did it though. Mm. Um, no, I think we've we <laughs> jumped some water. Yeah. You, um, we've done the, we've done talking about NX. <laughs> I no, there'll be a few more episodes about NX, especially towards the lead up. Yeah. Imagine those February episodes. Well, by then, we should know the name. February, for sure. Wasn't it they were planning to announce something in October or something? Where'd you hear that? I don't know. I, I feel like there was supposed to be uh, an announcement for the NX sometime coming up, October, November. Well, that's that seems reasonable because... We predicted last week that it would be about November, so... Yeah. A um, little bit of news before we get into our main topic. The um, Did you hear uh, about GoldenEye being sort of... Te- it was planned to be put up, then got taken down. On the 360? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, on the Xbox Live Arcade, that was it would have just been a straight port of the game, wouldn't it? The footage I saw seemed it was at least... Uh, because I know the original Banjo Kazooie game, when that got put on the Xbox 360, that got a, re- a revamp. How so? Just graphical enhancements, like sharper edges. Oh yeah, things like that. Well, the, the footage I saw looked to be like that. Yeah, so it would have just been a little upgrade. Yeah. But um, yeah, taken down by Nintendo Japan. Yeah. Seriously. No. Like, I don't know. There's absolutely no way of playing this game right now. Why would they take it down? I don't... I don't know if I would have played it myself, you know? Like... There needs to be... Would you Would you not love to play multiplayer GoldenEye again? Sure. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You do know. You're, just, <laughs> you're, you're holding back. You're not angry with Nintendo Japan about this? I mean, it's it's strange for sure. Even though, as well, like it wasn't included in the rare replay thing, that was another opportunity missed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like this game is essentially dead now. It's not dead. There's so much. Pe- there are so many people who are after no, this game. I know. Like, it's still a very popular game, but dead as in, it will never ever come back. In in a port, 
at all, you know. Especially since there was sort of a, a remake which was shit and it wasn't even wasn't really even a remake at no all. No way. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I liked it. Yeah, but it wasn't it wasn't like what we expected. Mm. The levels were nowhere near the same or anything. It was a completely different game. It just had the golden eye title. Sure. I liked it though. Did we I don't know if we talked about this last week as well. Did did we mention about the um HD gameplay of GoldenEye on an emulator? No. No, well um yeah, I saw a video on YouTube. Mitchell showed it to me actually, and it was full on HD Goldeneye. Like, re- it looked really good graphics, um, and it was the exact same courses and everything. But it was just on an emulator. Obviously, it'd be modded. Oh, okay. It so, wasn't like a, a remake through Unreal Engine or something. No, no, it was just someone who modded it. Okay. So, like, it looked fantastic. Um, it showed clips of Cradle and all of that, and it looks awesome. So. And that's and lots of the comments were people were saying you know bring it back and everything they'd buy it. Mm. So I don't know why they just don't uh, even a port sell it for like five bucks or something. They'd make money. Five dollars. Yeah. I don't know. It, if anything, it 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 would land on a Nintendo console, not Xbox. Yeah, I think Activision owns it right now. Don't they own J- the James Bond part? Oh, really? Not the... I heard Activision owns Goldeneye. Oh. Then who... Well, it can't be Rare, because Rare would have released it on Rare Replay. Yeah. Right. Then who owns... what? Oh, yeah, then the whole Nintendo. I was thinking of the Donkey Kong thing. It's so confusing. Stupid. Um, Let's just get into our topic today, Jake. The topic today is... Why did you want to mention something? Oh, I just wanted to say what I've been playing. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Let's get into what you've been playing. What have you been playing? Nothing new. I've been playing a lot of Bravely Second still. Um, this morning I picked up some Rugby League Live 2. A classic. Excitement. Um, been reading some books as well. So that's been taking up a lot of time. Ugh. No, I've been reading as well. Actually, I picked up Pokemon Yellow last night. Um, the... The thing that threw me away from that game was because I really wanted to get all the one, original 150 Pokemon and then transfer them over to my games. But when I found out you couldn't do that until you get Pokemon Sun and Moon, I just so, I just stopped playing. I lost interest. Why couldn't... Why? You, you can't trade Pokemon in the XY and Alpha Sapphire games. Oh, yeah. You, you can yeah. trans... Yeah. Yeah. So um, I wanted to pick it up because Sun and Moon is approaching and I wanted to get all those original 150 to transfer straight over to Sun and Moon. Um, but I picked it up last night. I was in bed, um, and I was like, I forgot sort of all the Pokemon that I was getting and what who mm. I was training to evolve and everything. So I needed to get a pen and paper, but I couldn't be bothered last night. So next time I pick that up, I need to have a pen and paper to write all the Pokemon I've caught down. And plus, do you need to buy another version, right? Yeah, probably to get all of them. Yeah, but I, I assume the Pokemon that you're missing. I assume you, you'll be able to find some of them in Sun and Moon. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's for sure. Well, I lost interest in Yellow. My my biggest main... The main thing I, I lost interest was because there's a... There's an unofficial glitch, I think you'd call it, where you can get Mew in the game. Oh, okay. Unofficially, but it's like... It's like it's there. Mm. It's, um, it's when you're heading up past... Cerulean City, Cerulean City where Misty, Misty's humans. Yep. So you head up, and it's like a bridge with all these trainers on it. Oh, I've seen this actually. Yeah, and but there's a lot to it, isn't there? You have to do a lot. Well, a lot of things right to yeah, get it done. It's it's yeah. manageable for sure. It's it's mm. not like this complicated mess of things you have to do. It's it's definitely manageable. But if you go past that part, you, you've you've missed your yeah, chance. Yeah. So that was my biggest thing because. When I saw the glitch, I had essentially just passed that bit in the game. But why would you want that, though? Because you want Mew. We've got Mew. How do we have Mew? We got it from the that card. The level 100 Mew. Oh, can you transfer that from... Yeah, you can transfer anything to Sun and Moon. Oh, well, whatever. I want another one. You want two Mews? I think I already have two. <laughs> <laughs> I have two of something. Yeah. Well, Either way. What if you have two or something, give one to me. No. I worked hard for those. Uh, I've missed a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, well oh, you would have missed it now. You missed the you missed um Arceus. 
Is that its name? Yes. Yeah, you missed it. The God of all Pokemon. Why? The card... Why? I don't know. I mean, if I was in a Pokemon phase, I would have gone not, gone down and gotten it, but... I You're there, know. like, twice a week. No, once every two weeks. Still, that's <laughs> enough to ask for the card. I know. I, I just forgot about it. But, um... Yeah, uh, I am really excited to um, finish collecting the original 150 because it's been a dream of mine since I was a, a wee a wee lad. You can do that in Pokemon Go. Fuck Pokemon Go. <laughs> to to catch the original 150 on a Pokemon Yellow game, that's a dream come true. Or <laughs> or every Pokemon available on the game, but um, I think I'll follow a guide to do that next time I pick it up because I just want to get that done. And then I want to restart the game after I've traded all the Pokemon. I want to restart the game and literally play sort of a, kind of like Ash's Journey kind of thing. I just want to get a Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander, have Pikachu and Pidgeotto on my party. And I think Butterfree was there as well. <laughs> Send Butterfree away because, you know, he's, you know, wants to fuck another Butterfree or something. And then you get your Mankey and then you send him away because for whatever reason you're a dumb shit and you should have kept Wait. Mankey. No, he didn't make he evolve in Primate, but then he had to give him away? Yeah. But what? He always had this sixth slot of Pokemon that he always gave away. And in the meantime, there's this Krabby just chilling with uh, Professor Oak. And yeah. then he comes out in the Pokemon League and just just takes on three Pokemon and just takes them all down and go, Whoa, Krabby, he was good all along, but we never saw him through that, throughout the whole show. Wasn't Krabby his first... He- first Pokemon he caught? No, that was his seventh. It was the first time that he saw the Pokemon va- Pokeball vanish. Oh. And he's like, "What's what the hell's going on? Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I forgot who Ash's main sixth Pokemon was. I think it was just a spare spot because he kept giving Pokemon away. Because mm. I know there was Bulbasaur, Pikachu, Charmander, Squirtle, and Pidgeotto, those five. But that sixth one, there was always like a new one. He had Haunter for a while. Oh, yeah. He gave that away, and then, um, hmm. yeah, he had a few different ones in that sixth spot. Haunt so. is such a cool Pokemon. And I think my second playthrough of Pokemon Yellow will be the first ever time that I nickname my Pokemon. What would you name him? I don't know. Um, maybe for Charmander, Fire Engine. Uh. <laughs> no, the little engine that could. <laughs> um... Poke Pikachu, I'll give him the old classic name, Sparky. Sparky. <laughs> That's so gay. Um, Squirtle, I'll call him Hose. <laughs> Bath time or something, I don't know. Um, what about oh, Bulbasaur Lawnmower? Oh. Yeah. Well, what, what's Butterfree? You know, like... <laughs> I was going to say Butter Slut. <laughs> Pidgeotto can be um something to do with fly, a flying plane. Nine eleven. Oh, <laughs> who knows? All right, let's move on, eh? Yeah, let's move on to our uh, our main topic today. Oh, no, I haven't talked about what I play. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Stop! You're an awful host. No, no, no. You you are oh, okay. I got lost because you asked me what I wanted to. Pl- yeah, what I, I played. I was yeah. being polite. Then okay. you're supposed to throw it back. Jake, what have you been playing this week? Oh, God, well, I've been playing a new game. Yeah. Uh, and um, let's move on to our topic. <laughs> no, I'm um, after playing Zero Time Dilemma. Really big on um, what do you call them? Uh, graphic novels. Yeah, those kinds of games. Lots of reading, minor gameplay kind of games. Mm-hmm. So I've moved to uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney because I picked up the trilogy. Mm. This is a very good game. A very so you very mean good game. playing the, the from the start, the first one. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's that one called? Just Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. But that's not the very first Phoenix Wright game, is it? I think it is. I don't think so, but continue. Prove you wrong. Just check it Wikipedia now. Alright. You keep talking, and I'll check it. Alright. Uh, no, it's a very good game. It's, um, like I said, the visual novel kind of thing, so pretty much 98% of the game is reading. Um, oh, see, you've already visited the page twice. Um, That's correct. Yeah. So lots and lots and lots of reading. Um, surprising how much reading there is to do. And after all that reading is is a bit difficult to... No, see, you're on the first game already. Go. You have to go to the series. Keep talking. Let me see. Um, 
I can't. I'll, I'll find it. Keep talking. It's hard to multitask. You, you just don't look at the screen. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, like I said, I started from the beginning, and it's um, it's a bit strange because with all these new games already released, right there, you had it right there. <laughs> right there. With all these new games released, I can see um, characters that have um, come up and how who are going to come up, and so it's a bit spoilerific. Look, it is the first one. Yes. Yeah, the, the the that trilogy you bought is the very first three games. Yeah, yeah. So and then, and then they miss the fourth one and then the fifth one, but they're not the main ones. No, yeah, you got the first. Oh, sorry, the only one that isn't available to play on the 3ds is Apollo Justice Ace Attorney. Why? Click it. No, because that's that wasn't released on the 3ds. This is just DS. Ace are right, Dual Destinies. That's okay, but that's not actually a a Phoenix Wright game, and it's a it's a he's a different character, Apollo Justice. Oh, okay. So you can play every single Phoenix Wright game on the 3DS. Cool. So all three original ones, and then the Dual Destinies, which came out in 2013, and then one that's going to be coming out in like a couple weeks, Spirit of Justice. Demo just got released for that today. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the um, there's the Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Yeah, yeah. Which I'm going to play as well. I need to get that as well. So, but continue. Yeah. Um. Very good game. It, like it's just it's just like a, it's like reading a, a crime novel essentially. Yeah. But it's much more it's it's much more based on the court proceedings. So you have to do. So whoever you talk to, all the characters you speak to, and all the evidence you pick up in your, sleuthing, I guess, is so important. You have to remember every little, bit of detail. Do you write shit down? I don't, but I feel like I, I might start doing so because, so far. When you come to the court proceedings, it, it it does give you kind of second chances if you do if you don't hit the right thing. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of lot of decisions, and then you really is it kind of like La Noir? No, not at all. Okay. No. Well, I guess you can't read facial expressions or anything. No, so. because this is all yeah stop motion, so it's really based on the words. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. It's it's so interesting. Much like Zero Time Dilemma, you have to learn to think outside the box. Yeah. So, the, the the game is, you know, the witnesses go up on the stand, they testify, they give a testimony, and you have to cross-examine it, and that's where you, uh, that's where you find contradictions, and then you bring across evidence to support that. But sometimes, sometimes it's pretty easy um, when they well, you can find the contradiction pretty easy because you know it or you have to press them harder for information and that reveals a little more and I don't know it's really interesting and it's a lot of fun but like I said lots of reading and it gets a little tiresome um is it because it is the first game in the series does it feel simple enough for anybody to get into yeah if you do you think that if you skipped these first three games and just went to the first 3DS game which is Dual Destinies do you think it would be a lot harder to know what's going on or to understand. I know you haven't played it, so it's hard to tell, but do you think that this game would have evolved so much in what? It'll be 12 years since that the gap between the one you're playing now and Dual Destinies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean... There'd be so many new sort of elements they would have put in to this court trial and everything, wouldn't there? Whereas yeah. the, the original game, I, I, I suspect, is very just simple. Yeah. It's quite... Oh, yeah, I mean, there's there's hardly any... There's, there's, there's essentially no gameplay at all. Yeah. And I think that's what... It, if I was to get into this series, I'd need to start from the beginning mm. um, to know, yeah, what to so, know what's going on, I guess. Plus, it, plus it's a whole... It's a connected story as well. Yeah, yeah. Through the game. So I want to be... I want to know what's happening through the whole way through. Yeah. Um, it's annoying how they didn't bring out something like this with um, Professor Layton. The original three. Or the original four, really, that were all released on the DS. Four were on the DS. Yeah, only two of two of them on the 3DS. So there was the first one, which is like something the village or something rather. Then there's Pandora's Box, which I own. I don't know the other two. Well, Miracle Mask and Azran Legacy are the only two on the 3DS. Okay, it would be cool if they brought over like yeah a collection. Mm. That'd be really cool because yeah, they must be pretty hard to find by now. Yeah. It would, and I have I have played the first game and then the second game, mm. and then I've seen 
gameplay of these new games like Miracle Mask. Yeah. And it has evolved so much. Mm. So if you could connect from what Professor Layton is to Ace Attorney, I guess, then yeah. If I were to jump straight into Dual Destinies right now, I would be pretty overwhelmed, I think. I played the demo for Dual Destinies, but I really had no context. I really hate demos. Yeah, they, demos for these games especially is a, is a weird one. Yeah, they really just put a bad th- spin on the games, to be honest. I don't think I'm going to play the demo of Spirit of Justice either, just because of my experience with Dual Destiny's demo. Mm. So I think I will get the original trilogy. And I think you can get a physical copy of that as well. What? The original trilogy. Can you? Yeah, there's a physical copy of that. Damn, I would have got that, because reading right here, yeah, it will be a digital-only release for Spirit of Justice. Oh, right, yeah. Damn. So they've changed that, yeah, okay. I'm going to... I said this a couple weeks ago, I'm definitely going to run out of room on my SD card. Because uh, I had a look on EB Games' website today for mm. the Professor Layton Phoenix Wright game. That's You can't get that physical anywhere in Australia. eBay? I might have to resort to eBay. I think I'm going to go on eBay and get those games. Because on my list of 3DS games to get, I've got the original trilogy, I've got Dual Destinies, and I've got the Professor Layton Phoenix Wright game. Mm-hmm. What made you stop playing Miracle Mask? I've I've had a, a couple of phases with it. I picked it up and played it for quite a while, maybe five hours, and then put it down, and then picked it up again for well, another, another five hours, put it down. I guess I just I, I I guess I just got sort of sick of the repetitiveness of the just doing the puzzles. Like the puzzles are fun, but I guess it's quite a long story and quite a long drawn out story. And, um, some of the puzzles were very challenging. So the story wasn't pulling you enough through mm. it. I, no, I, I, I would say not. I think they need to maybe even have sh- a shorter story, mm. maybe just a, um, a much shorter campaign to keep me interested. But then also in the main menu, there's an option to do all these other puzzles or whatever. Yeah. Well, you know. what's what's cool about is Phoenix. What it cool? What is cool about Phoenix Wright? And I'm sure this continues over each game. Is the game is broken up into yeah core proceedings, but they're broken up into episodes. Mm. So each core proceeding is a separate case, but somehow all ties together into the bigger story. Yeah, yeah. Through little bits and evidence and stuff, which is so, really yeah, cool. So everything is to do with the story. Yeah, but so, it's broken yeah. up, which is really cool. It it um. It's not just the same characters over and over again. You meet new characters every two hours or so, which is cool. With the Professor Layton game, there's so many times when um, he sort of stumbles across a puzzle and it's got nothing to do with the story. He just feels like doing a puzzle mm-hmm. and it's sort of just like a waste of time. Why don't you just have those kind of puzzles in a main menu side quest things where you can just choose to do them later and just keep the, keep the story just going, you know? So you want the wussy option. You know how games now, like... Uncharted stuff come with difficulty options. It's like easy, but it's not. It's nothing to do with. It's nothing. It's nothing to do with difficulty. No, not difficulty. As in, like you want to just breeze through a story rather than get overwhelmed with puzzles. I just kind of want to really see what happens at the end. I can't really be bothered going through a hundred puzzles to get there. Wuss. It's not being a wuss. But you got through uh, Virtue's Last Reward, almost kind of. That was only about eight hours. You've got a lot to do in that game still. Why yeah, have, you, have you stopped? I have stopped. Why? Because I got into Bravely Second. Oh, Scott. Okay, I can't, I can't go through an in, the this entire year of 2016 and not play Bravely Second. Okay, finish that. When and you then finish... start Xenoblade Chronicles. No. <laughs> when you finish Bravely Second, I would have had finished 999 because I'm still waiting for that in the mail. Mm. I'm stopping everything I'm playing once I get 999. Once I finish that, you play nine oh nine. Then we can then we can go in order again. How am I supposed to play nine nine nine? I'll give you my DS. Oh, I've got a DS, but I don't want to play that piece of shit. I'll give you my old three DS. Wait, no, I'll give you my my DSI. That's a that's a pretty big. Screen. You'll give me it. I get to keep it. Mm. <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, I highly recommend a, uh, Phoenix Wright. For anyone. These yeah. games are old. Look, the first one came... I'm playing a 2001 game at yeah. the moment. Does it look good? Is this the... There's a screenshot here. Is that what it looks like? Yeah, that's from number one. So that's, that's, not, a, that's not too bad. No, it's just it's just hand-drawn anime style. So it, yeah. it holds up for sure. And they're not... They're not animations. They're just pictures, aren't they? 
Yeah, uh, yeah. The the only animating is when they do is cutscenes. No, there's no cutscenes. There's just if they get if they get more objection, that kind of thing. Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. And if they get so if they get angry, their faces change to a different. Are they all voiced? No, that's why it's reading. I think I pref- like I don't know if um, I don't know. It doesn't really bother me that they're not voiced because if a, a heavily a base a game based on reading, you can read this really quickly. However, if you had to listen to their voices, it would take a lot longer. Yeah. That's what I'm having with trouble with Bravely Second because there's so much talking, but I just have to mute it sometimes so I can read it faster than they speak because they speak really slowly. It it does, but it also it also just gives voiced I like, know it creates character, and then you feel more for the character. Yeah, but then, happen. but then I compare it to if I read a really good book, and I haven't, I make the voices up myself. Yeah, yeah. So this is essentially what I'm doing for Phoenix Wright. But also, when you read a book, and you're really liking the book, I don't know how you read books, but do you sort of read books quite fast and just go through line by line, line by line? If I'm reading a really good book and I love it, I slow it down, and I, 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 I sort of do those voices. Like they would say it, and it takes me a long time to read it. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I read a really good book. Maybe The Great Gatsby. Fuck The Great Gatsby. It's a great book. Okay, so have you seen the movie? No. Next time, oh, if you see the movie, next time when you read the book, would you picture Leo? Yeah, I would. Unfortunately. So is that why you don't want to see the movie? A little bit, actually. Well, yeah. who do you picture? Do you, have you just made someone up in your head now? Yeah. Right. I mean, the movie looks good, but my version of the book seems better. Ooh, Baz would not like to hear that. No, I just, I don't know. I bought the movie, so I've given him his money, so whatever. Have you bought the movie? Yeah, I got it on Blu-ray. And you haven't watched it? No. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Have you seen the interview with Baz Luhrmann, how he's, um, it's like a Great Gatsby interview, but he was like, he's so up himself sometimes, he's going, I made Moulin Rouge. And and I I've made well Romeo and Juliet. Really, he did that. Yeah. Wow. He's gone on about all these movies he's made, like he's some kind of superstar. He's pretty good though. Oh, he's average. Because he's done the the Get Down as well on Netflix. Oh, is that him? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, they were saying on the radio. I'm pretty sure they said Baz Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann. Um. No. So that's what I've been playing. Um. And then tonight I've. Um, I'm like 20 hours, probably close to 30 hours of backlog of podcasts. <laughs> you know how you get, you get to that stage. Yeah, yeah. So tonight I'm playing a game where I need to not read or not pay attention so I can get rid of at least, I don't know, at least a quarter of these podcasts. Yeah. I hate having them so backed up. So that means no Phoenix right tonight. No, fortunately not. That's why, yeah, I mean... That's why I don't like about some of these games as well. You can't do anything when you're playing these. Like, I'm playing Bla- Bravely Second, but I have to have silence when I'm playing it. Mm. Otherwise, I won't understand the story. Same with Phoenix Wright. You know, you have to have complete silence. Yeah. So it's annoying when it's got that kind of thing. That's why sometimes I just re- revert to just playing FIFA sometimes when I don't really want to play it, but I, I just want to watch something in the background. Yeah. Uh, it's been unfortunate because, like I said, I'm in the mood of these visual novel books. Yeah. So I'm going to toss up between playing Phoenix Wright, the Zero Time series, and I'm going to start playing uh, Professor Layton as well. Yeah. So I'll have, you know, those games that I needed to pay full attention yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know. Tonight I might just um, finish my 100% run on Lego Star Wars, maybe. Have you finished your 100% on Zelda? Twilight? Yeah. Although, the only thing I haven't quote unquote 100 percented in that game is the fishing oh. I mean, you, you, you kind of need to catch all the fish mm. but I don't count that you have to count it Ugh. that's 100 percent, buddy that's what you signed up for it's so tedious it's your contract no I'm not doing it you'll do it no the, the next time I play Twilight Princess um because it is one of my favorite games because remember, I played it twice back to back. I played two playthroughs. Is it your it. annual game? See, I don't know. I don't. I, I would like to have an annual game, but because Twilight Princess is my favorite, one of my favorite ever games, I want to 
play it on really special occasions. Yeah. So I, yeah. I reserve the memory of it kind of thing. Yeah. So I don't know. I was actually thinking about having an annual game last night. Do you know what I thought would be a good one? Oh, let me guess. Um, Mario 64? No, I can't play that. Oh, true. Why did, <laughs> why did I guess that? Um, I don't know. Um, annual game. Hitman? No. <laughs> I don't know, just tell me. Halo. The original Halo. Oh, yeah. That'd be a good one. Yeah, I reckon. Because you can burn through that in essentially a night. Yeah. On easy. Ugh. <laughs> well, could, could at least play Heroic. You can... Okay, if you play it once a year, increase the difficulty once a year. I don't think it works like that. I've played that game so many times, but I'd still, you know, find hard, like normal a bit hard. I've never... We've got, to, we've got to get back in the co-op. Yeah, we, we can do that. Because wh- where did we stop? We were doing a legendary co-op run. Um, we stopped after library. I feel like it was two betrayals. Two betrayals, yeah. Or did we stop on the library? No, no we, we beat we it. we finished library. But didn't... No, the only... No, no. Truth and Reconciliation. <laughs> there was a glitch. So we finished Truth and Reconciliation, but then it froze in the final cutscene. And then it didn't give us the legendary badge. No, I thought like, no, you're right. It froze in the cutscene. It froze for us halfway through, and then we so we restarted and get all the way there. And then the final cutscene, it froze because that was when the game was essentially kind of new and it yeah, was having yeah. a lot of problems. We we got in the ship and it was flying away and it froze. <sighs> that was fucked. That was the worst level in, in Even gaming history. Even though we both know we finished it and we spent like three hours on the couch doing it together. Still not having that legendary badge on screen, it does things to you. I, I, I lucky though that all the courses are already unlocked. What if it didn't unlock the next oh, course for true. us? Well, um, because I don't have the I don't have those legendary badges in my game. We did couch co-op, so the the badges show up in mm, your game. Mm. I've got nothing appearing on my game. That's stupid. Well, because I didn't sign in with my. Oh, true. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. Because we were both playing on my Xbox. But if we play it, can we play online co-op? Yeah, so I'll get the. Yeah, if you, I did that. you. We'd both get the badges. So that's something we should do. That is something we should do. Yeah. Instead of playing Dead Island, hey, and, we... just, and just going around and getting something, you know, I I need my bottle of wine. <laughs> Where's my bottle of wine? You hype. You talk me into the, buying that game so much. No, I still, I still want to finish it. We've got to finish it. I know. We won't. Maybe we'll tonight, just... Jake. I'll play it tonight. Why not? Uh footy's on actually. Yeah. <laughs> Even if we just don't 100%, let's just get to the end. And then I can remove it from my Xbox. What, Dead Island? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think right now we're, we're trying to 100%. We're trying to tick off every mission on the list. Yeah, but it's fun. They're, like you said, they're all fetch quests. Yeah, I know. I don't think it's like that all the way through, though. I'm pretty sure that's only the beginning. I can't remember doing many fetch quests later on. Do we have a percent? Aren't we like 30-something percent through the game? Yeah, we're pretty... We're pretty far through it. Like yeah. we're all, we're almost up to the um bit where we get off this island bit. Okay, maybe we'll pick up then. Mm. So yeah. Well, how 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 late can you stay up to tonight? I uh, as late as late as I want. I'm an adult. No, I'm saying, do you have to do anything tomorrow morning? Um, oh well, yeah, I have to I have to leave the house probably about ten thirty. So you can stay up late. I'd say I'd, I'd say my limit is two a.m. Footy finishes at about 10. Okay. Is it a day? <laughs> yes. Wait, what is it? Halo or Dead Island? If we play Halo, it would be number one, wouldn't it? Yes, because we ha- we're up to do two betrayals. Uh, <laughs> can we play any other Halo? No, we've got to finish Halo 1. Uh, Halo 1's the best anyway, though. So. I'm not in the mood for Halo 1. <laughs> At least, you know, Halo 3. <laughs> I fucking hate Halo 3. Alright, let's just do Dead Island. Alright, Dead, Dead Island it is. Ugh. I'll have to have a, a coffee to stay up late. Yeah, I just had my first. Might mm. have to get through another. I usually have a coffee with a podcast, but uh, yeah, you wanted to get started. I offered you no, one no. on the way. I'm not drinking Zarafas, making my own coffee. I would have bought it for you. Let's get into our topic. 
My topic, and I haven't told you this topic, so it's just sort of just throwing it out there. Mm. Does Tony Hawk's Pro Skater deserve a second chance? That's a good question. Yes, I thought I thought so. Now, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was a beloved series um, up to up to number four, and then five. It was a comeback for the series, but it was not good. No, and, so many um, people were excited for it. Hey, and just but neither of us has played it. But both of us have have he, have you seen quite a lot of gameplay? Mm-hmm. I've watched a lot of gameplay because I I've been so close to buying that game so many times. I'm I'm just trying to watch gameplay to think how is it so bad? Like what's wrong with it? Seriously, but um and every time I watch gameplay, I'm thinking it's not that bad. Like the maps look really boring. There's nothing really appealing to it. Um, the gameplay looks very similar to the other ones, which is good. And then, and th- what I don't like about it is the how you can have like a flame board or something, and you get like these power ups where it has like these jetpack board. I mean, it looks stupid. But and then I was watching an actual review of it, and people were saying the load times and that kind of thing. And <laughs> if you um, you know how you make a mistake when you when you first get into the game, you got like two minutes to do your tricks or something. If you yeah. make a mistake, you just quickly press start, restart. And it goes straight back into it. Yeah. In Pro Skater Five, if you do that, it takes like five seconds to just load into it again. Five seconds isn't too bad. Well, not yeah, maybe a bit longer than that. But you know the frustration when you when you want a perfect run, mm. and then you have to wait. You know. Yeah, that's um. I can imagine that. For example, Dirt Rally. That's a game I oh, restart yeah, yeah. probably a hundred times to get the course right. Mm. That restart is instant, mm. instant. Mm. Um, but, which it needs to be in that kind of game. Yeah, and then. The frustration, like you said, we comes with Tony Hawk with the lo- long loading times. That also happens in like Dark Soul games, oh, Bloodborne. I've heard the load really? times, and you know how frustrating how frustrating those games are. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of deaths. If you're sitting through a thirty to forty five second load screen each death, screw that. Mm. So uh, yeah, it's another thing with a game like Skyrim. Every single time you walk into a door walk outside a door like the, you had to go to that loading screen for like 30 seconds do you think the remastered version will fix that well i hope so because um not this is anything to go by but um the don brown and cuckoo game when that was on uh, when i was playing that on ps3 had quite long load times as soon as i got the xbox one version it was instant do you think the developers of skyrim are saying yeah let's uh let's make this game more like don, Bra- don bradman just Giving an example. Those guys have big end, do some good work. But the thing <laughs> is, if this new Skyrim game is, uh, um, if they've done a lot to it, like it's a major graphic improvement and everything, I think the load times will just be the same just because they've done so much to it. It'll be like an Xbox One game. I, so. didn't, f- I didn't find the load times awful. It was just a bit jarring that is every single room. Yeah. But anyway, uh, back to Tony Hawk. Does it deserve a second chance? Uh, this was their first sort of mistake. I but um, not sort of going on the Pro Skater series. There's lots of other Tony Hawk games as well, like Probing Grounds and. I played another Tony Hawk game for 360 called Project Eight. Yeah, that's one I was thinking of as well. I, I rented it, and yeah. I loved it, that game. Oh, really? Awesome game. Yeah. Because um, it said you win an open world kind of like skate. Yeah. And um, you take on missions and stuff. Um, so if they could, if they could even revert back to that kind of style, I would love that. Mm. But again, the Pro Skater series isn't that kind of game. No, it it tried to be Pro Skater three and four again. It gave you like these little mini worlds. Where it went wrong is the worlds were shit, and um, it just wasn't. <laughs> They're trying to make a full triple A game. Whereas now, if you make a game that's like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, that's like a mini $15 indie game, mm. like compared to the games that they're making now. Off topic again, have you ever heard or played a game called Oli Oli? No. It's like a... It's pretty much... On, it's essentially on every... You can get it on DS. It's a 2D skating game. Yeah. Um, and your objective is to just... It's essentially a 2D pro skating game. Check it out. Yeah. I think it'd be... If you want to play a Pro Skater game. So Oli Oli is better than Pro Skater 5. That's what all the 
That's what it looks like, yeah. It's ridiculous. That's what I... I don't know. It looks really cool. Ollie Ollie. Anyway, does Pro Skater deserve <laughs> a second chance? Well, is there, are there really people out there who, if Pro Skater 6 came out and it was it was a really good game, people were giving it 8s and 9s, do you think people would just not buy it because Pro Skater 5 was shit? Mm. I don't think so. I think they'd go out and buy it. Yeah. If there was cynical... If... <laughs> If there were cynical people, yeah, and we're talking about gaming gamers, yeah. uh, I'd buy it. It's just, you know, like you said, the only thing deterring for me from buying the, the one that's out now is the bad reviews and the the fact that it's kind of always online as well. Mm-hmm. Why? That's another thing. I think that has something to do with the loading times as well. Because when you go to these worlds to do your tricks and everything, there are other people playing on those worlds as well. Ghosts or... They're there. I think you go... I, I, I'm i not sure if you get knocked down by them. Oh, that'd be so annoying. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty sure you just go straight through them or something. Even... But yeah. to, it takes so long to get back into that world because it, it's an online hub. Mm. Yeah, that was a misstep. I don't know. Because, like you, I was so hyped for this game, remember? Mm. Like everyone else was, to get burnt like this... Um, I just I think it deserves another chance. It might just it might just need another long break, like it like it did. See, I don't think so. If they've just had a long break and they came out with that, I think they should release Pro Skater Six within next year or the year after, but make it good. I just don't. What, think, what I don't what, think they'd get the support to do that though, just because of Pro Skater Five. What What would make it good? What would make it good is to actually have interesting worlds again. See, I can see where they're coming from. They tried. They tried a few new things to reinvigorate the series, I guess. Not just make it a carbon copy of 3 and 4. But I think they should have just done that, but release it as a smaller game, like a $20 game or something. (sighs) Well, then they should have just made a a HD version of 3 and 4, like they did with HD 1 and 2. Yeah. That would have just been better. I don't know why they haven't done that anyway. Like, why would you release a HD version of 1 and 2 when you could do 3 and 4? Hmm. Man, how good was number three? Yeah, that was the best. But um, yeah, to make to make the if if there was a Pro Skater six, they need better worlds. They need to be more colorful because looking at that game, it was so sort of it was like a grayscale kind of dark, dingy game. Mm. They went for this kind of uh, what, what do you call it? Like uh, cell shaded, yeah, almost kind of look. Yeah, I don't know. They, they didn't look too bad. They need um, character customization again because that wasn't in the game. Oh, really? nothing yeah, to do with that yeah it was get, just you choose one of the pre-set characters you gotta have customer yeah customize one of them was tony hawk's son you could choose oh he has a son yeah and he's like he's this pro skater is he yeah <laughs> trying to think of the simpsons episode his name is with... pony hawk no oh. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of the simpsons episode with tony hawk in it what's some quotes that's oh, the episode yeah, with blink point eight two in there as well yeah 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 good episode um, what else could make better? Uh, I don't know. Uh, didn't they? Did they make all brand new worlds, or did they? Did they try and at least one or two maps, kind of redo some of the old maps? Pretty sure it's all new. Yeah. But that's another thing. It could be something similar to Mario Kart Eight. They could have like maybe four tracks from old games. That'd be cool. Um, just sort of redone. Factory. If they were to pick from one from um. Pro Skater 3. Oh, this, they're all so good. Um, cruise Ship. Mm, yeah, that was good. Airport. <sighs> Airport was... Suburbia. Was Suburbia is definitely my favourite. Definitely my favourite. Oh, the snow course. The snow course? Yeah. What's that? The snow course. Come on. you, you got to remember this. <laughs> you you need more than the snow you, course. You start off in that little car park. Oh, oh, Canada. It was in Canada. Yeah, yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that was a good one too. Good one. Don't you just give me the snow course. Um, the third one. Oh, the third one. The third one, Jack. <laughs> no, the third one was the... Um, It wasn't exactly a proper course. It was like that time trial. I mean, not time trial. It was like a little um square thing where you could grind around the whole outside. Oh, um, was that... A little skate park. Was that called Rio? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Rio, yeah. I know more than you do. 
My memory serves me better. I'm, was, I'm, no, was, I'm refreshing your memory. No, because there was three of those competition ones. There was yeah. Rio, Skater Island, and Tokyo. Tokyo, yep, yep. <sighs> yep, suburbia. What was, what was Skater Island? Um, it was kind of like a skate park indoors, and then a cruise, a, a pirate ship came along and blew, oh, it, yeah, blew yeah. the door that side, yeah, so you had the little mm-hmm. beach outside. Mm-hmm. That was very cool. Mm. Anyway, we're probably dipping into a lost shuffle here, aren't we? We are. Oh! That sounded bad. Sounded like glass broke. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I, I, I do think that Tony Hawk Pro Skater needs a second chance because I, I don't believe that people would be stupid enough not to buy a new Pro Skater game that that reviewed well. I yeah. I would buy this game if, if and when we get our, we can start doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, gaming captures. Yeah, game we'll captures. Just, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll see just how bad this game yeah. is. Oh, that could be another series. We'll play. We'll play bad, bad games. Bad games. Yeah, but that means that are. means we have to buy the bad games. Well, bad games are usually cheap. True. I mean, I think you can get Tony Hawk pretty cheap. You just got to wait for it's on sale or something. Mm. But um, oh, what was I gonna say? Yep. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Tony Hawk Pro Skater Six coming out uh, soon and uh, confirmed. Confirmed. Right here on the 411, folks. You heard it first. Um, let's get into Nosh Shuffle. Just got to bring it up here. All right. Do you want to fill in some time? Uh, sure. <laughs> Come on, Jake. Um, so, yeah, I, I had a look. Um, like, like both of us, we've been playing old games or backlog games for, mm-hmm. for pretty much the whole year. Mm-hmm. There is a game coming out for the rest of the year at least once a month that's going to fill my the rest of the year. Next mm-hmm. month is Bioshock the Collection. Oh yeah, super that's excited. Out soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, plus Dragon Age, Dr- uh, Dragon Quest. October. Yeah. Is Paper Mario. Mm-hmm. So also, sorry, in there September is Metro Prime. Yep, that's right. So September is a pretty big month. October is pretty slow, at least for me, which is just Paper Mario. Another trailer came up for Paper Mario as well. Man. Oh, game, I've seen that. Actually, that game looks so good. I'm not as excited as you are. I think that you haven't played as much as Party Island, or was it Island Tour? I was just sort of, I'm so over Island Tour that I just don't want to be disappointed Do you, again. Did you think I said Mario Party? I said Paper Mario. You said Mario Party, didn't you? Did I? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm excited for that as well. Yeah. I'm talking about Paper Mario. Okay. Well, did you watch the, they, they put out this, they're putting out this five part trailer of, of Paper Mario leading up to release date. It looks, the game, probably one of the best graphical games I've seen on the Wii. Then why hasn't it been getting a lot of attention? Because people just want a, people just want a um. Uh, what's that Paper Mario game called? The Thousand Year Door. They just want a redo of that game, mm. and this game isn't like that. And I hate, I hate people who say that. <sighs> this game is gonna get bad reviews. I can just see it, and I hate that because I'm so excited for it. Would you rather um, a remake of The Thousand Year Door? No. No. The game was good, but it's not as good as everyone makes it up to be. Mm. I don't get it. <laughs> Just... Oh. You've, you've heard me rant about this a thousand times, but... Yeah. Uh, and then that's October. November was... Ooh, can't, can't remember what's coming out in November. But I know December is also South Park, so yeah. No, I, I yeah, I read the list of all these upcoming games, and um, there was a few in November. Was did you mention Forza Horizon Three at all? Mm, no, I didn't. Are you excited for that? I don't know if I'll. Yeah, I think I am. I don't know if I'm going to get a day one. Yeah, I was thinking that too. There's too many other things. Mm. I might wait till that's a fifty dollar game. The game that has come up for Nosh Shuffle this week, for those of you who don't know, Nosh Shuffle is where we l- shuffle a list of 100 games, uh, games that we played as kids, and we will reminisce, we will take the uh, the re- remainder of this episode to reminisce on this uh, fantastic time we had as child, as children, on this game. Seriously, just give me the number. <laughs> number 26, Reckless, oh. The Yakuza Missions. How cool is this game? <laughs> I forgot this game existed. No, this game... Um, when we got our original Xbox for Christmas, 
with it we got 11 games and this was one of those 11 games that we got and it was probably the least played out of all those 11 games That's it was true. it was one of those games that we sort of never played and it was kind of like a joke game where we said oh what do you want to play are you reckless everyone was like oh fuck that you know, <laughs> just because there was so many others that we had like halo and harry potter you know all those games that we we loved even more than this one so yeah, I always, we this game didn't get a lot of love. I always before we talk about the game, I always we always question because our parents went out obviously and bought the Xbox with these eleven games. Mm. We always what went wonder what went through mum and dad's head when they picked up these eleven games. <laughs> Were they did they ask a, a salesperson what what games are great for 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 teenage to young child boys? Yeah, or I they, think we were all children. Children. And the then, oldest was Nick, and he would have been, oh, 13, 14. Mm. Yes, he was, yeah, early teenager. Did, or did, did they just base it on front cover things, or? Yeah. I don't know. But what what made them pick up Yakuza? Uh, Reckless. Reckless, yeah. yeah. It was it was a car game. Maybe they wanted to have a mix of all different genres. Did we have none? I mean, Road Rage was not Simpsons Road Rage. Mm, they would have seen that as a Simpsons game, not a, not a car game. Mm. But either way, some great choices in there, some excellent choices. Shrek, it's what it's what part of their choices that day that when they went out and bought that bought those games, that is somewhat what formed this show. We didn't thank them enough for that. No, too stubborn to. <laughs> But let's get back to you, um, Reckless, the Yakuza missions. I have a feeling there were sequels to this game. Well, you you know the series Yakuza. No. You, t- go to uh, Google search Yakuza right now because it's an actual series and I feel like it's a series much like... Uh, I don't want to say Shenmue, but, you know, it's, it's a Japanese set game and it's... Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe it's more of a fighting game than it is a... So this is called, sort of like a spin-off game, is that what you're saying? Yeah, Reckless was a spin-off to the... So, spin-offs are all here. There's... You, there's I don't know. Reckless, Reckless is not a part of the spin-offs. I, th- I feel like you're confused. I feel like that it's not a Yakuza game. It just had the word Yakuza in it. But uh, why would it... It has to be a spin-off to the Yakuza. Why? Why does it have to be? Because it's got Yakuza in it. So... Oh, there's the front cover. Click the front cover just quickly. I want to see it. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. I always remember um, when you're driving in this game, it's like... I don't think you could blow anything up. You could hit cars and that would damage things. But if you ran into the street, the people wouldn't get hit. They'd be like ghosts. You'd go straight through them. Oh, really? I thought they all. I thought they were all quick enough to run away, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, the graphics were terrible in this. No, 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 no. just go back. You're about to exit. Oh, right. Whoops. Either way, either way, I know this game. Like you said, we hardly played it much, and when we did, we didn't get very far. I find it. I think I remember it being a difficult game. So, the, the biggest thing I, I remember. Oh, look! It's hardly got a Wikipedia page. Mm. Couple sentences about it. Yeah, the biggest thing you remember. Biggest thing I remember. Oh, here we go. Sorry. However, was oh, that was GameCube and PlayStation versions was suffered from performance issues and did not sell well. Yeah, Xbox did the best. Xbox. Yeah, this game. Um, one of Nick's friends came over for a day or something, and he got very far in this game. I remember. Do you remember this? No, no. I th- I remember we only did the very first two missions. The very first mission was just in a sort of a suburban street or whatever, or not a suburban, like a, you know, Tokyo kind of street. And then there was a second mission where it was kind of like on, on the docks. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like, yeah, near a lake or something. But I can't remember ever getting f- further than like the first two missions. That, and then that's where Nick's friends came in. He he got further than that. I can't remember that. Oh, wow. Maybe I wasn't there. Okay. But... We're watching some footage of it now, and it looks better than I remember. This actually looks really fun. Yeah, it actually does look fun. And it's, it's got like a time at the top, so you've got a, you've got you've got time, and it's giving you arrows to tell you where to go. 
But um, yeah, you're kind of just bashing into cars. Yeah, and... it's it's very arcadey racing yeah. uh, kind of thing. And I think the hardest thing for us is, I think maybe this was it. We didn't enjoy it because we just wanted to free roam, mm. but it had that time limit on it. Mm. Maybe mm. that's why we didn't find it fun, because the city looks really cool to explore. Yeah, and you're right. You're you can't run into anybody. They just run out of the way super fast. Yeah, and remember, like you said, that we we had a choice of two missions and. That were, you you play as p- different people in a different oh, car. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You remember, so you remember this car? I can't remember what the other car was, yeah. but I don't know. I remember this game. This looks way. I, I would play this right now if I if I could. It looks. Unfortunately, we can't. Unless you, it could work on the three hundred and sixty. No one's mm. ever tried it. Mm. But I'm just I'm just shocked. Activision made by Activision. Oh, I'm shocked that it's not you part of the Yakuza thing. And why does it have you? Y- Yakuza in the title. It's just it's, Yakuza oh, yeah. is just part pause of the it. title. Oh, sorry, I went to pause it, but I went down. Go back and um. Yeah. The characters almost. So there it is. So we had those. Scott, you missed it again. What? Just pause it where there's the. Ah, you're awful. Okay, here. So this is as far as we got. We have scenario A, sub- scenario B. So the the one. Oh no. But I remember. I do remember these two. You could be part of the police, or you could be um, spies. Ho and Chang. Right. So maybe you could take sides. So you could be in the police car or something. Okay. Yeah, I remember these two chicks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely not one of the most chronicled Xbox games we once owned, but... We we never played it much at all. Oh yeah, you had to. I remember these black cars. You had to yeah, destroy. destroy. Yeah. So, yeah, that's reckless. The Yakuza missions. We usually end with, by saying, "Go pick it up." But I mean, I would. <laughs> I want to play that more. Why uh, I... you'd pick it up and you'd have like you'd last five minutes on it. You'd be like, "Ah, this is not worth it." Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll do us, Jake. Um, I don't know when we'll be back because. My house is getting renovated next weekend. Yeah. Might just take a week off. But that means we'd be two episodes behind because we're already one episode behind. Why don't you just come over to mine? The sound quality. Ugh. Have we tried the microphones in my computer? No. Let's give it a try. We might be back next week. Might not be. But um, until then... Bye. See you later.